Well, you bring up an interesting point about Sorry. indefinite uh, detention. Um, a colleague of mine, uh, some of you may know, Professor Madeline Morris at Duke, is uh, writing a book about preventive detention. And one, there is a model um, for locking up people who are a danger to others. And it's an involuntary commitment under a, a mental, uh, a sort of a mental competency type of uh, involuntary commitment. Might that model be possible? Because from what I understood of your proposal earlier, Amos, I mean, people who have already committed terrorist acts could be charged in normal crimes with people who are potentially a danger of committing terrorist attacks in the future, perhaps had joined Al-Qaeda and expressed their loyalty to that cause, you know, maybe haven't committed crimes yet, but are a danger. Could they be locked up under some kind of model, a, a humane model, a model where they would get treatment and counseling, um, but on the basis that they are a clear danger to others. Any thoughts? Sure. The individuals who have been detained are nothing more than individuals who are suspected of an involvement in terrorism. They're nothing more than that. And for us to assume that they are incompetent, or for us to assume that they are, designed, they are in need of psychological counseling is, I would find to be what's worse than outrageous, outrageous plus. <laughs> They're nothing more than suspects. And for us to, to indefinitely, to engage in indefinite detention, however you want to model it, however you want to spin it, is, I would suggest, is clearly unconstitutional. There is absolute need. I can't emphasize this strongly enough. But do you want but to... Wait, wait, oh, wait, I'm wait, sorry. Okay. Two seconds. There's an absolute need to not tomorrow, not today, but yesterday, to establish a criteria-based vetting process. Otherwise, it's, it's nothing more than round up the usual suspects. Engaging in voluntary incompetence strikes me as, as untenable and unconscionable. But you do want to punish people based on future, I mean, no, I want future to punish, dangerousness, I, no, right? No, I want to, no. Again, what is the criteria then? The no. criteria, first of all, for establishing a, a, this vetting process is based on intelligence information vetting to determine who presents a potential threat, but you're not going to try them for being a potential threat. You can only go forth with a trial with respect to these people based on intelligence information if they present a, based, if you believe they present a threat, then you would have to indict them based on crimes that they've committed in the past. But it's absolutely essential that the criteria be future rather than past. But you would try them on acts they've done in the past. Some people, for instance, I mean, you know, Hamdi, we talked about Hamdi earlier. I recall it was either Hamdi or Hamdan committed a really serious crime of carrying a gun in Afghanistan. If I lived in Afghanistan, right? If I lived in Afghanistan, I'd have a tank. That's not a crime. That's not a reason to detain somebody. X percentage of the people who've been detained have been detained because sources were ratting on them for, you know, involvement in their, you know, without getting into the details, but, you know, personal crimes, crimes of morality. Those people need to be vetted. Those people need to be released. All right, let's pass the mic down and see if we get any more responses. Um, remember I told you on, at the last panel that I was not a constitutional expert, so now forget that. Um, <laughs> I agree, it's unconstitutional administrative detention um, under these circumstances. The kinds of, uh, of, of laws that are on the books and have been deemed con um, constitutional concerning um, dangerous individuals who lack mental capacity or uh, juveniles um, or, or individuals who um, can be detained after the completion of their sentences in, in connection with, with, um, with, with sex offenses are qualitatively different situations than the one in which you want to detain a person because you actually suspect that they have committed criminal activity. If we have an administrative detention scheme for these people, then why would a prosecutor in his or her right mind ever bother with a criminal charge? It is the quintessential slippery slope. Plus, I would ask anyone who's considering administrative detention to also bear in mind 
the nature of substantive criminal law that is already on the books in the United States. Some of the most far-reaching uh, types of criminal responsibility um, exist in the realm of terrorism. Uh, material support. Material support is a crime that is probably easier to prove than even the, the broad and, um, and often criticized crime of, of conspiracy. If a prosecutor can't prove a material support charge against someone who is actually suspected of and, and, and there is evidence of their involvement in terrorism, then I would submit that there is no basis for the administrative detention of that person either. So quite aside from the fact that administrative detention I do think is unconstitutional um, in, in the U.S., um, I think there is also no practical need for it, and once again, the, um, the, the larger costs of administering such a process uh, would certainly outweigh any of the potential benefits.